So I've talked about this puzzle, the Radiolarian 2, in a quick YouTube short before, but this video is about not one, not two, but four different kinds of Rubik's icosahedra. Yep, you heard me correctly, four, because I also made a one-by-one one icosahedron because I am just insane. I also have this corner turning icosahedron, the icosahedron megaminx, but I already talked about this puzzle in a video in the past, so um, yeah. So what are these puzzles? How do they turn? This one is called Aton Star, this is the Radiolarian 2, and this is the Icosamate. All three of these puzzles are manufactured by MF8. I believe the only one you can still get your hands on was Aton Star. I got this right as it was going out, and uh, the Icosamate, this, this is just out of stock everywhere, so I actually had to make my own. So the Radiolarian 2 is basically just a 3x3 face-turning icosahedron. Aton Star is a 2x2 face-turning icosahedron. And the icosamate is a deep cut two by two corner turning icosahedron. So it kind of turns down the middle like this. It's basically the icosahedron version of the skew. And by the way, a fun fact about face turning icosahedra, they actually can jumble. So if you align it like this, I believe, and then just you can just do this. See, this scares me, so I don't like to jumble it, and I didn't jumble it while I was solving it, but uh, you can if you want to. And it is the only face-turning platonic solid twisty puzzle type to jumble, so that's interesting. So I've talked a lot in my videos on the FTO and the Jinx Pyraminx about like quote-unquote canonically perfect twisty puzzles, like how the Jinx Pyraminx is the perfect Pyraminx, Crazy Octahedron is the face-turning octahedron because it has centers, etc. And you might notice that this uh, radio Radiolarian 2, it actually doesn't have centers. Well, a version of this with centers was never mass produced. Somebody did make one, it's called the Radio Cannon because it's canon. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, as you can see, it does have the centers. So this is about the closest thing you can get. If you want an aesthetically perfect Rubik's icosahedron, there's always the I Icosae? Icosaics? Icosaics? I don't know. You also can't get that anywhere. I, I feel like I've kind of missed the icosahedron party here. This is the only 2x2 two two icosahedron you can get because a 2x2 two two icosaix is actually impossible. And this guy right here, whose name I am bound to mispronounce in some way, managed to prove that. You should go watch his video for how he worked around the problem. And actually, if the icosaix was still around, I would recommend that over the Radiolarian 2 because these stupid freaking two millimeter edge pieces were the bane of my existence for like a full 12 hours while I was solving this. And actually I think that transitions well into my solving experience with these. This was fairly easy because this actually is just a shape mod of a pentultimate. When I bought a void pentultimate, I also bought another one so I could make this mod. Uh, and you can kind of see like these centers are these corners and these corners are these centers. Now the problem is that this turns horribly. So this also turns pretty freaking horribly. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for the Thingiverse files I downloaded for the extensions for this. And if you do plan on making this mod, don't take the puzzle apart because MF8's Void Pentultimate is just completely covered in factory lube and I didn't realize this until I had already taken the whole thing apart and it was all over my hands and all over the pieces. Just don't put yourself through that, you don't even actually need to take it apart for the mod. And there's a video on how to do it without taking it apart on the Thingiverse page itself. Don't be like me, don't be stupid. Anyway, Aton Star and the Radiolarian 2 were much harder. Aton Star is an objectively more difficult puzzle. It basically has everything from the Radiolarian 2 and more, except for these edges which can be solved intuitively. So this is a more difficult puzzle. In fact, I think this is the hardest puzzle in my collection. And what makes Aton Star even more difficult is that these centerpieces actually are movable, not unlike this cube diamond, for example. However, the Radiolarian 2 was the more difficult solve. And the reason I say that is because, and I don't know how MF8 managed to screw it up this badly, but you can't turn the puzzle counterclockwise. You can go clockwise, you can turn any face clockwise as many times as you want, but what you can't do is turn any face counterclockwise. Which you'd think that would be more difficult to do, but no, they managed to screw up this badly, and from what I've heard, the Icosa X has the same problem. So this puzzle actually took me like 18 hours to solve. Stickering was also pretty terrible with these stupid tiny little edge pieces. As for the actual stickering times, this one, the Radiolarian 2, has 300 stickers and it took me four and a half hours to put them all on. Aton Star was a little faster because it doesn't have these stupid little edge pieces. 
This has 260 stickers and only took two and a half hours to put on. And this one doesn't matter because it's, look at it. 80 stickers, right? Yeah, 80. And I don't know how long it took because they didn't time it because they didn't really care. If you want to try solving any of these puzzles for yourself and you happen to have one already, there is a tutorial by Zergasaur. This person's tutorials are absolutely freaking amazing. It, would, it, made, it made it so much smoother to solve them. You should, you should watch those tutorials if you're gonna do this. I guess that's all I have for this video, so thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, click the bell, all that good stuff. And, uh, Happy New Year. I've been thinking about resolutions this year. Um, maybe I should, like, touch grass more instead of just doing Rubik's Icosahedra all the time. Alright, that's enough for this year.